a group of passengers aboard a cruise ship experience a turbulent series of events in the black comedy satire Triangle of Sadness. The three-part movie takes with subjects including class disparity, capitalism, gender equality, and people's innate need for power. One cannot help but consider all of these elements as they analyze the finale, since they are so intricately woven into the story's DNA. Allow us to provide some clarification if you're also wondering about the closing scene's ambiguity, the potential implications for the plot, and what it implies for the travelers stranded there. Spoilers ahead. Models Carl and Yaya are together and engaged. Carl is less successful than Yaya, and both of them are obviously motivated by their Instagram following. Carl, however, seemed to be more inclined to take matters seriously. They receive an invitation to a cruise with only extremely wealthy individuals as guests in return for its advertising. The crew member's duty is to make sure that the visitors get everything they want, whether it's a unicorn or a recreational When a severe storm strikes and nearly every passenger contracts food poisoning, things start to go south. A few passengers are left trapped on an island when the ship is attacked by pirates at the same time. While the majority of them are passengers, Abigail, a lady whose duty it was to clean the ship's restrooms, assumes control of the situation. Everyone is dependent on her for their existence since she is the only one who understands how to survive in the wild. Does Abigail kill Yaya? The travelers can survive on the island thanks to Abigail's abilities. She leads the group since she provides the food, builds the fire, and fishes. The travelers adapt to the new order of things over the course of several days. Abigail gives Carl more food in exchange for sexual favors. He wants her to make their relationship known to the public when the other people start to make fun of him about it. He merely needs to end his relationship with Yaya before that. Before anything can happen, Yaya arrives in the morning and says she's going on a hike to see what else the island has to offer. Abigail decides to go with her because she thinks it would be risky for her to travel by herself. Yaya finds an elevator at the end of the hike and learns that the island is home to a posh resort. She wants to enter right away, but Abigail encourages her to hold off. She enters the bushes pretending to use the restroom before ambushing an unaware Yaya with a rock. The picture concludes with a view of Carl rushing through the forest, but it is not revealed what Abigail ultimately did. Why does that matter? Did Abigail really kill Yaya? These are our hypotheses. Theory 1. Abigail does not kill Yaya, whether or not Abigail kills Yaya, depends on where she lands when it comes to her hunger for power and her inherent morality. Not much is revealed about Abigail's backstory, but the way she immediately takes to her new surroundings, it is clear that the island resembles the place where she has lived before. She has grown up near the Sierra River, at least, and has spent a lot of time fishing and cooking with the bare minimum. But she has done all of these things with the people who shared her responsibilities. She has to cope with those on the island who believe they are entitled to food, even if they haven't done anything to earn it. Nevertheless, Abigail tells them about it. The passengers are able to realize that she maintains the majority of the share for herself. After all, the majority of them have lived their entire lives with a capitalist mindset, and Abigail is doing the same. Things calm down after it is acknowledged that the one putting in the greatest effort determines the rules. With no signs of animosity in her heart, Abigail appears at ease with this system. In the end, when she considers killing Yaya, she hesitates for a moment. We see her wavering, especially when Yaya offers to help her once they are back home. Perhaps this offer makes her drop the rock, as working for Yaya would certainly be a much better job than the one she had before the ship sank. The only reason that Abigail didn't want to leave the island was that there was nothing for her in the world out there. But Yaya offers to change that and considering that Abigail isn't an inherently violent or evil person, there is a chance that she'll choose to stay that way. Another possibility is that she is stopped mid-act. Abigail kills Yaya, before becoming stuck on the island, Abigail's life was not very good. She didn't want to go back to her life of poverty and helplessness. Especially when she takes charge of the group and has the opportunity to exert authority over those who would avoid her altogether in reality. She has the life of her dreams on the island, even with the barest necessities, so when it becomes apparent that there is a route off the island, she feels immediately threatened. 
She notices the elevator and knows that all the power she has been using all these days will go as soon as the other passengers realize they don't need her any longer. She would lose all of her value to them, and she does not want to be reduced to this. Abigail decides it would be easier to simply kill Yaya, return to the beach, and act if the resort doesn't exist because she is the only person who is aware of the elevator. She does pause for a moment, but the movie doesn't explicitly show that she backs down. She might be psyching herself up to do something she's never done before because of her hesitation, in fact. While killing Yaya is not something she enjoys doing, she must nonetheless do it. In a sense, the preceding scene where Jarmo murders the donkey anticipated this entire scenario. In normal conditions, he wouldn't have done it, but the entire group is in a grave situation. He strikes the donkey once, satisfied that the job is finished. But then, it turns out that the donkey isn't dead yet, and it will take at least a couple more hits to properly kill it. Once Jarmo sees it, he knows that there is no going back. He does it, even though, by the end of it, he is both emotionally and physically exhausted. The same can be said for Abigail. She might not have killed someone before, and she might not have considered it in her previous life, but things are good for her on the island. She is the leader of the group, everyone wants to please her, and everyone wants to be her friend. She even has a handsome boyfriend now. None of this would be possible out there in the real world. And so, to keep things that way, she kills Yaya. Do the passengers survive? If not this, then it's possible that someone else will find them eventually. And the concluding scene lends support to the idea that this has already occurred. The passengers may have been discovered on the beach by the vendor or another islander, who then offered to take them to the resort. Carl makes the decision to track down Yaya and Abigail and bring them back to the beach after learning that they had left for a hike. Maybe that explains why he's moving so quickly. He is thrilled that they have been spared at last and may resume their lives. The rest of the passengers will definitely make it off the island, whether or not he gets there in time is a whole other debate.